All right, I'm going to say shalom to everyone. Um, I'm going to come at you all with a short video. Um, I was, uh, you know, searching on Google, um, you know, YouTube or whatever, you know, doing my little thing. And I would notice at the top. <laughs> all right, I said I wasn't going to laugh, but I tried to make this video a few times, but uh, I, I just... It's just silly, man. They got at the top where it says, uh, help fight Ebola. For every dollar you give, you two will give two. So I'm looking at this mess, right? And I'm thinking to myself, these people must know that Ebola don't exist. I'm going to tell you why. You, if, if you really pay attention to the times, it's around the seasons of holidays, holiday season. Don't people understand that even before the 70s, don't people understand this so-called new outbreak of Ebola? It started in the summertime. So now all of a sudden they want to come out with donations to help fight Ebola. You know, this, the, the words they use, fight it. There's nothing to fight people, okay? It's a joke. Ebola don't exist. They scramble the word around under the English linguistics and language, and it's below, B E A L O, below, or bialo. Balu in the concordance. Balu is the the etymology is to make sick, to make somebody sick. So it's a joke. They put formaldehyde in the waters in Africa. Then, since it's a few cases over here in America now, there's some things that, oh, okay, so it hits the America and some other country, I guess, or whatever, and now they want to come out with funding around the holiday season, so they're going to they're gonna play on people's ignorance in their kind hearts, okay, their kind hearts. I have I've, I've seen, um, you know, certain neighbors already, right after the Halloween mess, was over with all saints day which was november november 1st i've seen neighbors putting up christmas lights and all that didn't even get to the thanksgiving mess yet but, but they got christmas lights all over and i looked at the house and i'm like at the window and i thought the glass was shattered but no it was some twinkling silly lights all up in the window already so they playing they know when to give out this garbage so they're going to probably make tons of millions of dollars on people and i guarantee you this I, how many of those families in, the, in West Africa will be fixed up? I want people to monitor and find out if they're going to help these people. No. I'm going to tell you how I know. Uh, Derek Coleman years ago tried to help out Detroit. They got Derek Coleman for some tax issues. Wyclef tried to help out Haiti. The so-called the, the so Haitians are the tribe of Levi. No, they got, they dealt with him in some issues to find out that he had some tax issues. That's how they're going to do it. When you really want to help, they're going to try to find some kind of way for you not to because they're pocketing the money. So every dollar a person give and they give you two, going to give two dollars. Yeah, they're going to give two dollars because they're going to help out for the spreading. It's, it, it, it's just advertisement the spreading of this word and, and you pop up you can go to Google right now and it still pop up and say some mess about that help fight Ebola no that's help Esau the evil side of the Europeans Amalek the 1% and those that are in cahoots with them to be rich to play on people's souls leave your money in your pocket is a joke if you want to go help some people for Ebola, go to the families of the people that's been diagnosed with this below, because that's what it is. Go to a, go get you a manifest of all the hospitals that have an outbreak of Ebola. Go to that people. Go to find out where these people at, and then you give to them. The best thing for you to give to them is the scriptures. If you want to give them some money, fine. Do it on a personal level. Don't trust these people. They're under the CIA. They go out, they go and set up Al-Qaeda and all these other 
terrorist groups to go and uh, destabilize a country. And then after they do that, they come as friendlies or heroes. Yeah, Herod, hero, because that's the origin of the word hero. But I use it on layman terms if I make other videos in reference to our powers, because that's what they're trying to mimic, our foreparents, how powerful they were. But the word hero comes from Herod because he was considered a powerful man and was going around slaughtering kids looking for Christ. So we need to wake up on certain things. Don't deal with the news, the mainstream news. It's a matrix. It's mind control. And I say this a lot. That's why they changed all these screens into plasma. Because you have plasma running through your body. So now they learn how to hone in on your, your algorithms and your brain. It's a joke. You look at Google now and you look at the top of it. You're like, oh, man, let me do a good deed. It's the holiday season. And you're all smiling and, and don't know you're being deceived. You're walking around in a dark room. And don't know how many nails are in there to stick you in the foot. Turn the light on. Look at the Bible. You'll get the understanding. And then you'll see the nails. And you'll see your enemy as for who he is. He's a joke. He likes to play. He's the beast. Satan. I'm going to show you the people that's, that's behind all this mess. Because this is what they did to the North American Indian. That's what they do in Palestine. Some of the... Jordanians, they, they're doing it to the Syrians. But but guess what? See, these countries were in league and they were confederate with the European, but now everything is unstable and now they feel a certain way about them. And, you know, they're going to all eventually going to come against the Europeans, the West, the Western world, the so-called Isra Israelis and these people. They're going to come against them. But I'm going to show you how you got to find out. Uh, let me find the scripture real quick. Give me a minute here. Obadiah. Let's go to Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah chapter 1. It's so small, it's hard to find sometimes. Give me a minute. Obadiah chapter 1. I'm going to start at the first verse. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. So there's some concerns that the Most High have with Edom, and he's given Obadiah this vision. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the heathen. So there's going to be somebody of high stature that's going to be sent among the heathen. It's sent among the heathen, Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. So the, the Edomites, the so-called European in the earth, is really small amongst all the other nationalities outside of Israel. Be, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So what happens is they're despised at this point because you notice in Psalms you will read that it said that they conspired against us. So there were different nationalities of people, different countries conspired against the children of Israel. And there's an Israeli brother, and I said in another video, that came out with this information that I'm going into that said that everything is about us, the Jews, the Israelites. We are the true Hebrews. So all the other nations are fighting right now based on our demise, and they want to take control and take advantage of us. But since Esau is going around fighting with all the other nations, undercutting them with CIA assets like your so-called Al Qaeda, that's nothing but a terrorist ran group funded by the feds, period. Everybody's starting to know that now. You got Syrian girl coming out with it. You got uh, all the other uh, all the other underground news people coming out with it. Alex Jones, C. Green. Dabu, all these underground people telling you the truth. But the big picture they're not putting together is why? It's because of us, the children of Israel, scattered throughout the four corners. Now, what we're reading here in Obadiah, we see that the other nations are starting to come against her, the whore that you're reading in Revelation 17. The whore is America. 
aka Babylon, the daughter of her, the daughter of Babylon, they all came to get riches from her. But she's not paying out her dues. So they're because they he undercut Edom, undercut all the other nations. Behold, I have made these small among the heathen. That's your one percent. That's why it's not too many. This is the evil side of Edom. Let me make that clear. The Amalek, the falling angel hybrids, the ones that people say, oh, I've seen a shapeshifter and all that. That stuff is true. They can shapeshift. This is why it says small among the heathens. They don't reprocreate as much because they keep their blood in this same family. Your dukes and all that. They only deal with their royal, so-called royal blood family, bloodline, your skull and bones and all that. They all kind of look alike because they are the ones that mix hybrids. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So their pride have deceived them, thinking that, okay, I'm up top and I'm going to stay up top. It's almost like, and I, should I bring the brother up? I won't, but I'll bring out his actions. There was a brother that was beating up everybody, a boxer. He was beating everybody down until he got his behind knocked out. And now he started having issues mentally because he's, some people just get so used to being up top, they don't understand how it feels to be, to hit rock bottom. So it hurts them mentally. And see, the Most High is going to show that Edom pride will eventually fall. And there's no coming back from this country that has so much pride. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, though thou dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. The reason why they dwell in the cleft of the rocks so they can see, they can see their prey like an eagle. Look and study their prey, their enemies. So they can come down after they study you and know exactly how to deal with you in a cunning way whose habitation is high that saith in his heart who shall bring me down to the ground so they up there up top they build their buildings up there and you skyscrapers and all that and they set it up even in your cities where the highest or the most important people are on the highest floor they set it up there that's pride that's a prideful mindset okay society is set up on the pride of America even now right now you got parts of Asia that's set up like in Babylonian ingenuity as America. So every other nation um, contributes and uh, mimics America's ingenuity, the way they set their cities up. And it says, The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Though that thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rocks, whose habitation is high that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What people put the eagle on as the emblem? Then other countries start doing that to represent their new world order. It's set up by the Masons. They deal with one world government. They just break it into demographics for the clubs or the ponds. But it's all one agenda. Albert Pike, which is, they got a statue in, in, in D.C., he set up three world wars. It's already been pre-planned. There's another brother. He was a, a soldier, European guy, good guy. Uh, I think I don't know his whole title, but I know he was in the army of some sort. I think he was some high-ranking official in the, in the army, and came out with some information about they're going to have they pre-planned. And I may have to don't quote me, but it was uh, I think five wars. They're going to go to war with five countries in seven years. So I may have it backwards. I think it was seven countries in five years. I may have that backwards. So I may post that information up on how it was stated, if I remember. But they pre-planned everything. And he got out of that. He noticed. He was like, something ain't right. So he got out of there. Certain officials, they get out. And they go in hiding because they know that their head is going to be dealt with later. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. What is a nest among stars? Among the stars, people. Your space stations, your 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 NASA. NASA, if you look that up in the Hebrew, N-A-S-A -A is a word under the Hebrew. It's decoded. They give you an acronym for it, but it's the, the actual Hebrew name or word for NASA is pride. To be prideful. All right? 
Set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the most high. So what they're gonna do, this is the this is their the pretext is okay, they use taxes to they wanna see this uh you know, they wanna go to Mars and all this fake they know Mars and all that don't even exist. There's no such thing as planets. Okay? That I I deal with that on another time. What you see out there is with there, that's what it is. You don't see nothing red out there. If you do see something red or some other color of some kind planet, look for Project Blue Beam being under that. We got to go by what the scriptures say. The scriptures don't say nothing about no Mars. But we know who they call Jupiter in the New Testament. They, Because Peter, uh, Paul had so much power and things of that nature. They called him Jupiter. They named the planets Planetus links to falling angels the wanderers look at wanderers in the in the greek and it is linked to planetus there's no such thing as no planet planet links to falling angels so they 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 just name them neptune and all these different greek myth, mystical beings which did exist greek mythology did exist but they they want you to think it's a myth but it's not they were falling angels, they had kids, and their DNA were mixed, and they're hybrids today. Though thou exalt thyself as an eagle, and though thy nest is set among the stars, this will I bring thee down, saith the most high. If these if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? So usually if you get robbed, you still got a dresser <laughs> you still got a bed you see what I'm saying verse 6 how are the things of Esau so but but there's a different type of gender you know how are the things of Esau Edom or the so-called European when they take stuff there ain't too much left the land is desolate then they come as friendly to, to fix it up like I said let me make this clear I am talking about the evil side you got good generations of Esau period and I'll read the scripture. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are, how are the, the hidden things sought up? Hidden. The hidden things of Esau. Secret societies. Skull and bones. Okay? Secret societies. Who came up with that and got a bullet in his head? Kennedy. There was certain information about uh, even Paul Walker. He was under the Illuminati. He wanted to get out under Hollywood. He didn't want to, even his father said, he's done with this. I'm tired of making movies. I don't really want to deal with it no more. They burnt his behind up. It is not a coincidence. If you do the research, there's a video floating around YouTube. There's not a coincidence that this man died in a uh, Porsche 13 years later, uh, 13 years after, I mean, later, excuse me, or earlier. Let me make that clear. 13 years earlier, he was in a movie uh, called Skulls or something like that. And he was driving around in a Porsche. Come on, man. That's how they do it. So you're talking about verse 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Hidden. Hidden society. Secret. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. So all his people that, in, that are in cahoots with him have brought him to the border. That's what all your, your, your wars are about. Everybody's bringing Esau to the war to the border now. Your so-called Jewish people in the land today are not Jewish. They're Israelis. They're Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 in a nutshell. I know thy works and thy poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews, but are not. But say they are Jews, but are not. See, we're not calling ourselves Jews. We're not calling ourselves Jews. We're calling ourselves Hebrew Israelites. Or we're calling ourselves African American. We're calling ourselves everything else but, but Jews. They're calling themselves Jews. But are the synagogue of Satan. That's what it says in Revelations 2 and 9. Revelations 3 and 9. They worship in synagogue. So we understand based on scripture. That these people that's in the land today. Are not true Jews. Based on Abraham or, or Jacob's seed. They are from the seed of Shem. They are Shemitic. Alright. They are from the seed of Abraham as well. But we got to realize two nations was in her womb, in the, in the mother's womb. 
all the men of the confederacy had brought thee even to the borders the men that were at peace with thee had deceived thee so now when it talks about even though i went off a little bit when it talks about the borders because now they are at the borders starting wars with other countries but right here in this particular scripture is talking about north american indians how they came to the waters to the borders and they came as friendlies and peaceable the peaceable ones and uh, all the men of the confederacy have brought thee even to the borders the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee there is none understanding in him so what happened is like I said the so-called pilgrims and all that they had an agenda to come against the North American Indian so what I'm reading here is how you need to look at what we got to realize we got to look at the behavior notes on certain people what people run Google what people run YouTube what people fund wars so they are in they're the culprits that cause certain things to happen. They come in, like I said before, they come in as friendlies. Um, let me, since I know I'm a little tough on the, on the European right now, let me go to uh, Amos. Like I said, some of them, some of them are good, but you got to be careful. You got to be very careful with them. They're very sneaky people. Of course, other nations are sneaky, but Esau can take a lie detector and, and pass that John. He can tell you a lie right. In, I didn't kill. I didn't kill that person. They had blood running all down his face somewhere, and the person that he killed was in the next room. And take a lie detector, and they won't even budge. That's the see that I'm talking about. They're not. They're not normal. They're not human. Just human. They're. They're actual hybrids. They have demon. They, hybrids are are a mixed generation of falling angels. Seed. They have the falling angel seed, because the angels slept with women. And these women bought giants. They learn how to evolve. Think it's a joke? Okay. Now, let me read Amos 9, verse 12, to, to show that there's going to be a remnant of Edom, which is like Cornelius. He's, he was an Italian. I guess I need to find that scripture because some people don't understand that he was from the Italian band. So you got some Italian, even though they, if you notice, they act urban. Uh, they are totally different um, in the way they act. You got some people in uh, the UK, some Europeans out there, they okay, you know what I'm saying? You would know, it's like, and I'm gonna tell you that this may sound weird. Even some of your hillbillies, they don't understand, they may not like it because what they were taught. But a lot of them are really, they act just like regular black people. But they, like again, they don't, they, they taught society to hate. They teach race. So what they do is some Europeans that they think that they're the same. They, they want to be high stature, just like our people treat each other like we're racist against each other. It's the same with the so-called some of the Europeans out in the countries that's hillbillies that's coming against the new world order that's setting up certain sites on trying to fight against them with guns and all that. They're going to blow them people to pieces. That's why this world, that's why America's done because they're going to come against everybody here in America. Because it, a lot of people are starting to find out the truth. People, Europeans even coming out with the truth now. Saying who the, the true Europeans are. So, but this here, we see. And I want to read this so some of the good Europeans know that, you know, those of us that are in Christ, in Christ we love you. So, I want to make this clear. And they know. You got some evil red seeds of Edom, boy. Really. All right, Amos chapter 9, verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. And matter of fact, I'm going to start at the first uh, 11th verse. In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David. So now this is going the time of Christ. So certain things is going to happen. The tabernacles of, Christ, of, of David is representing all the, tri the tribes, of course. And where we have, where we have been scattered. In that day, will I raise up the tabernacles of David, that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. So he's going to close. Excuse me. He's going to close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. So eventually, in the days of old, there's going to be we're going to be 
following the law, statutes, and commandments again. The twelve tribes will be established. So verse 12 is saying that they may possess the remnant of Edom. So we're going to speak about the good parts of Edom. That's how you know you're in the last days. We're all the way in Amos here. And I'm telling you that, yes, we got good Europeans. We have to, we need you to fight against the beast. You know, we have to fight against our own, we, the European, I mean, the so-called Negroes and uh, the Guatemalans and all the, the, the 12 tribes have to fight against their own people. So, yeah, you're going to have to fight against your, your evil seed, too. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen. So all the heathen. You're going to possess, we're going to possess the remnant, which means not we're going to be slaving them and beating them like they did us. Nah, it's going to, we're going to possess you as show you the Holy Spirit on how you need to walk now. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by the, called by my name, saith the Most High, that doeth this. So the Most High is going to call a remnant of, of the other nations to help out his people, period. All right. Verse 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treaders of grapes. Him that soweth seed in the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And what it says, and I know there's a few interpretations. I'm going to go back to when it says, and I will bring the captivity of my people of Israel. We're, we're bringing on the captivity of being under the law again. You're under the law. So it's going to feel like you're in captive because you were under the so-called European laws. But you're going to be free from those evil laws. And you're going to go back into righteous captivity there's a scripture that i can't remember in paul's writings that says you will be a slave to righteousness so you're going to be under captivity in a righteous manner all right and i will bring again the captivity of my people of israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them because you see in our captivity we were doing this for the other nations you see, so now we're going to be under captivity again. This is old Quaker's English, but we're going to be doing it for ourselves now. But it's going to be like, you know, man, it's, it's work, but we know that we're doing it for ourselves. So we need, so the Most High needs to possess the remnant of some of the other nations to help us with these duties. We can't just do it ourselves. A lot of us, I don't know how to plant too much of nothing. I don't know how to milk a cow, but you got the Europeans, so called he, the hillbillies and all that. They milk cows and all that. They know how to do all that stuff. So we're going to need their help. And I will plant them upon their lands, and they shall no more be pulled up out of the of their lands, which I have given them, saith the Most High. So there you have it. Um, I said this video wasn't going to be long, but uh, I had to go there. As we see, all that fake stuff about giving for Ebola and all that mess, it's a joke. All right, They want to play on people's kindness around the holidays because people are ignorant of holidays, not understanding that that's just a spirit of deception around this time of the year. You got our people even in the 70s. Then this time around, our people been sick with Ebola since, uh, if I can remember, and I know I may be off on my math or time, since of April or, or, or I think around the summertime, in the middle of the summertime, Ebola broke out. So why did, haven't they, did, why all of a sudden Google and YouTube want to come together and help now? Oh, I know why. Merry Christmas, right? Shalom.